covered the topic, the Word of God, and uh, today we are coming to share with you the topic which is the Holy Spirit. So our topic today is the Holy Spirit. But before I proceed with this topic, I would kindly request that we pray because this is a very, very sensitive uh, matter uh, when it comes to the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you once again for this wonderful evening that indeed you have granted us to be able to share your word and to discuss the meaning and the purpose of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We thank you, Father, for taking care of us in the midst of this COVID-19. We thank you for working with us in the midst of this fire, and you have been always there to encourage us and to comfort us. We thank you, Lord, for your love and for your care and your divine protection and provision. Now, Lord, as we share your word, I pray that your Holy Spirit will guide us even as we discuss this very important topic that concerns him. We thank you, Lord, for my dear viewer, wherever they are, even as they listen and as they see me, I pray for their families in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The Bible says in John chapter 16, verses 5, But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me where are you going. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is not to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he comes, and when he come, he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of their righteousness and of the judgment of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take off what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has, has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Now, the, the passage I've read is the ones of our Lord Jesus Christ speaking to his uh, apostles in the book of John, chapter 16, verses 1, uh, verses 5 to 15. These are ones that Jesus shared with his apostles in his last days before his crucifixion and he was speaking about the coming of the Holy Spirit. Now, it is important to know that the Holy Spirit is the most misunderstood person 
in the Holy Trinity. And the question we are trying to answer today is, who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? Something is, is a power from somewhere. Others think, others think it's a myth. Others think it's a force that comes from some place. Some people, even when they are preaching, they refer to the Holy Spirit as hate. Hate meaning is an object. And others think the Holy Spirit may come in a mighty way, in a big way. And uh, Elijah, the prophet, testify, testifies of the Holy Spirit, and he testifies of how God came to him in the book of uh, 1 Kings, chapter number 19, whereby Elijah was in a, in a cave, and he was waiting to hear the Lord come to him. He had the hardy quick, he had the fire, the big wind, and many things were happening, but he did not manifest himself through that way. He came through a still voice. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, today, you might be also wondering, where is the Holy Spirit? He may not come like an earthquake. He may not come like a flood. He may come in a very, very still voice in your heart, even as you are seated in your house. Might be the Holy Spirit is the one who has been working with you in this uh, calamity. He has been your encourager and your comforter. Now, who is the Holy Spirit? I would say the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Holy Trinity. He might be invisible, perhaps, but very real. He may not have the flesh and the blood, but remember, he lives in our bodies. And therefore, even if we may not see him physically, we can see him in an individual life. We can see the Holy Spirit residing in your life. If you read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, it says, the Holy Spirit resides in our bodies. Why? Because our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit, especially those who are born again. So the Holy Spirit may not be seen physically, but he resides in our physical bodies. And therefore, we refer our bodies as the temples of the Holy Spirit. How do you know he is a person? Now, we are saying, who is he? We are saying he is a person. And then, how do you know the Holy Spirit is a person? Now, being a person, the Holy Spirit has feelings. He has some feelings. Of course, if we talk of a person, a person means he has a feeling, like I may have some feelings, even though he is God. He has a feeling like, he can, he, can, he can be engraved or he can feel hungry. If you read the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse that, it says, And do not grave the Holy Spirit of God with whom you are sealed for the day of your redemption. Do not grave. Do not grave the Holy Spirit. Do not let the Holy Spirit become hungry. And who is this Holy Spirit? The one that you are sealed with the day of your redemption. The moment you got saved, the Holy Spirit participated in making sure that now the agreement between you and God through Jesus Christ, who is the mediator, has been sealed. Those who know about the seal, it is a permanent mark of ownership. So the Holy Spirit becomes the third person in the covenant, whereby the, the, the first person is the God Almighty, or God the Father, then he comes through the Son, who is Jesus Christ, and then now we as human beings, we are connected, we are reconciled to God through Jesus Christ, who is our mediator. So Jesus Christ, according to 2 Timothy 2.5, he is our mediator. He is, he is the one who is mediating the covenant. Now God is there. God the Father is there. Then God the Son, who is Jesus Christ, is here. Now reconciling man and God. 
And now when does the Holy Spirit come in? The Holy Spirit comes in now to become the person who seals the covenant. He approves and he says now it is clear that Julius, through Jesus Christ, he has been accepted back to the kingdom of God as a child of God. Now he comes there and he does the sealing. He, he seals the covenant between me and God, which has been negotiated by Jesus Christ. Now you can see how the Holy Trinity works. God the Father comes in, he calls us for the salvation, but we cannot get saved unless through Jesus Christ. And therefore Jesus Christ dies on the cross, he saves us by his blood, and then the Holy Spirit comes in to seal the covenant, and not only sealing the covenant, he lives in us. And therefore, as a person, he can be irritated by our actions. He can be grieved. He can feel angry. He is living in us, yes, but sometimes the way we behave, the way we talk, we, he, he feels uncomfortable. And, and I, I want to tell you, my dear viewer, please, if you are born again, know the Holy Spirit is living in you. And sometimes your character, your behavior, may be grieving him, may, may make him feel bad and feel sad, even living in you. Uh, that one you can also read in Isaiah chapter 63, verse 10, that says, Yet they rebelled that grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned and became their enemy, and he himself fought against them. The Holy Spirit turn, turning against the people turning against those that he was supposed to help because they have rebelled against the Holy Spirit. So when you rebel, when you, 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 you grieve the Holy Spirit, he feels uncomfortable to work with you or to accomplish the work that is ahead of you as a believer together with him. Number B, uh, Holy Spirit being a person, he has a feeling and one of our, our feelings is that when you insult the Holy Spirit or you blaspheme, there is this, the sin of blasphemy, which is very wrong. And it is, it is in Matthew chapter 12, verse 1, uh, verse that one that says, And so I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven. But blasphemy against the Spirit of God will not be forgiven. Now, when we blaspheme the Holy Spirit, when we talk heal about him, we, we talk bad things about the Holy Spirit. When we reject the power of the Holy Spirit, that sin, Jesus himself says, cannot be forgiven. Rejecting the Holy Spirit. Rejecting the Holy Spirit. And this is what happened in the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 51. Uh, where Stephen says, you stiff naked people, you, your hearts and the ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. You resist the Holy Spirit. And remember, he is a person. So if you can resist him, it means he is a person. So Israelites resisted him in the Old Testament. In the book of uh, 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 act again, they resisted him. And therefore, because they resisted the Holy Spirit, then the gospel and to move from Israelites or from the circumcised to the Gentiles. Matthew, um, not Matthew, but the book of Acts, chapter 28, verse 28, it says, Now, since you have rejected the gospel, and rejecting the gospel is rejecting the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the one who is at work. Because Jesus has already left us, the one who is at work is the Holy Spirit. The moment you reject or you resist the Holy Spirit, you are blaspheming. And therefore, since you've done that, Paul tells the people of Israel, now the gospel will go to the Gentiles and they will receive it. These are some of the qualities that distinguish him as a person. Remember, Holy Spirit coming to us, he comes with a mission. He comes with a specific objective that he has to accomplish. 
And therefore him, being our person, he testifies on our behalf. He testifies. He stands and he is our advocate. The Bible says in John 15 verse 26, when the advocate comes, who, who, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. This is John 15 verse 26. Now, this is how we know he is a person. He comes to testify. A force cannot come to, say, to testify. It is only a person who can testify of something. So he comes as an individual who is coming to testify about God, the Father, God, the, the Son, and the entire gospel. He comes to testify about it. He also is our advocate. An advocate is the one who advocates on your behalf. He speaks on your behalf. You present issues and he becomes your advocate. And therefore, we can say Holy Spirit is a person because of that. He is also a person because he communicates. An object cannot communicate. If he was a force somewhere or a, a, or an, a, a robot, he could not communicate. So when you read the book of Acts chapter 13 verse 2, it says, while they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Spirit of God, or the Holy Spirit, said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Acts chapter 13 verse 2. Set apart. This is the Holy Spirit himself speaking. He says, Set apart for me these two gentlemen, Saul and Barnabas. And Barnabas. So it means... He can communicate. And therefore, it is only a person who can communicate something and say, set apart for me this. That is another point that I need you to understand. Point, another point that you need to know. Holy Spirit prays for us as a person. He sat somewhere or he will sit somewhere and pray for you. He will intercede for you. In the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 26 to 27 it says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. That's point number one. In our weaknesses. Like now, most of us are very weak because we have been detached from our normal way of worship. We are no longer mingling and interacting with our brothers and sisters in Christ and we are becoming weak spiritually. But now the Spirit of God is the one who helps us in our weaknesses. When we are not able to do some of the things that we are used to, when we cannot be able to pray the way we used to pray, when we cannot, you know, fast the way we used to do our fasting, the Holy Spirit comes in now to help us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through our uh, Worldliness, uh, intercede for us through wordless word groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the minds of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. This is Romans that I am quoting. That in our weakness is in the world that is full of evil, in the world that has many things. Through wordless groans or through things that are so painful that you cannot be able to speak out, the Spirit of God comes in to help us. Sometimes you go through a painful situations that you cannot even speak out. That time when you're in those situations, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes in for you to help you to speak on your behalf, to intercede for you and to pray for you. That is one of the things I want you to take uh, in your heart at the moment. In the midst of this challenge that we are all in, some of us have no ones even to pray. But I want to assure you, if you have the Holy Spirit, He is interceding on your behalf. He is speaking to your Father in heaven. He is reminding God of the challenges that you are going through. He is reminding God that he did as a son, as a daughter of God, whatever is happening in your life, God is fully aware. The Spirit searches our souls, 
He searches our spirit. He understands our deep feelings. He knows what we are experiencing at the moment. He understands deeper things of the spirit that the physical cannot understand. And therefore, he presents our needs to the Almighty God and he prays for us. That is one of the distinguished qualities of the Holy Spirit. He is there all the time, 24-7. When even your pastor is not available to pray for you, when your bishop is not near you to pray for you, the Holy Spirit is interceding for you because he is in your heart. Remember when Jesus was leaving his apostles, he told them, wait until when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So the Holy Spirit comes to empower. He comes so that he can help you in your weakness. He comes so that when you are not able to do something, he can encourage you. He is actually our comforter. He is our great uh, comforter at this time. He is our counselor. He comes also to counsel us. We may not be able to assess, uh, you know, counselors who will lead us through this uh, uh, the, 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 uh, season, but the Holy Spirit is present in us, counseling us day by day, hour by hour, and reminding us that Jesus is with us. God the Father is with us. The Holy Spirit is always telling us with that still voice that don't give up. Don't you worry. I'm with you. That is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit also has the ability to love. He loves us. The way God loved us, the way Jesus loved us, the same way also the Holy Spirit loves us. In the book of Romans 15, verse 30, it says, I hand you, brothers and sisters, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit of God to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. The one I want you to notice, love of the Spirit, the love that the Spirit has for us. He loves us so much. And therefore, because He loves us, He becomes our, our, our closest friend in the midst of COVID-19. Because He is a person who loves you, and He is a person who is praying for you, and He is a person who communicates and is a person who testifies of God's goodness and mercy in your life, he becomes your greatest friend. This is the only person that you can run to in your room. You close your door, you will have him in your room. When you shut your doors and nobody is coming to your house, the closest friend is the Holy Spirit. And, and most of us have never known that Holy Spirit, even when you engrave him, he feels bad, he feels sad, but he still tells you, what have you done? And that is still the voice reminds you you are sin, and you confess, and you tell God, I'm sorry for what I have done. You may never know the difference between you, the born-again person, and the person who is not born again. You as a born again person, you have somebody new. You have the Holy Spirit who speaks in your life every day. Even when you commit your sin, your sins are different because he will remind you of your sin. He will tell you what you have done. He will tell you this is wrong. Unlike the unbeliever, the unbeliever do not have the Holy Spirit. And therefore, even if he does the sin or she does the sin, there is nobody to remind him. There is nobody to convict him. He will continue sinning every day. But you as a Christian, you have a person living in you who reminds you of your sin every moment you sin. And he tells you, what have you done? Can you repent? And that is why you find most of us going back to our knees, crying to God and telling him, God, I'm sorry, forgive me. It is because the Holy Spirit has reminded you and he has rebuked you and he has, to, uh, he has told you that the judgment is awaiting you if you don't repent. And that is why we are different compared with other people that are not born again. But I also want to say the Holy Spirit also distributes the spiritual gifts. We have different gifts in the body of Christ. 
and all these gifts are distributed to us by the Holy Spirit as a person. So he has a responsibility of giving us the, the, the gifts. This is written in the book of 1 Corinthians uh, chapter number 12, verses 11. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit. And he distributes them to each one just as in determines. So it is the work of the Holy Spirit to distribute the gifts. Some have been given the gift of uh, prophesying, others the gift of you know, knowledge, the wand of knowledge and wisdom. There are several gifts that we have been discussing as we continue with our topic. And you will get to know the works of the Holy Spirit and many things that the Spirit does in our lives. But for today, I just wanted us to understand who is Holy Spirit and how uh, do you know that Holy Spirit is a person? Those are some of the few things I wanted us to get to know today. That we get to know that the Holy Spirit is a person, He is the third one in the Holy Trinity, and He is referred as He, not as it. I also wanted to know that as a, as a person, He has some feelings, He can feel pain, He can be grieved. And also I wanted you to understand that you can distinguish him as a person by the things that he does. Some of the things that I've said that he does, uh, you can know that he did is the Holy Spirit. And finally, I wanted you also to understand the main objective. Uh, uh, the main objective is that the Holy Spirit testifies of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he does the work of sealing. The main work that he does is sealing the covenant. Uh, when we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he connects us to God the Father, and we have a covenant between us and God. And then the Holy Spirit does the sealing, and therefore he confirms the covenant. And then after that, he dwells in us. He comes now to live in us. He comes to live in us. And every day we wake up, you have the Holy Spirit in you. And don't treat the Holy Spirit like hate, because if you treat him like hate, then it means he's an object. But when you speak of the Holy Spirit as he, you are referring to him as a person who has the ability to love you, who has the ability to intercede for you, who has the ability to comfort you during this time. You are speaking of a person who has the ability to give you counseling during this time. You are speaking of a person who has the ability to encourage you and to hold you your hand and walk with you in the middle of this uh, uh, COVID-19. You are speaking of a person who has the ability to fight some battles on your behalf. And this is the Holy Spirit. And I want to wrap up by saying, Holy Spirit lives in you. Don't be cheated. So when you pray, remember, you have the Holy Spirit in your heart. How do you get filled by the Holy Spirit? Sometimes we need to understand that when we feed ourselves with the right things, we are feeding the Spirit man. The Spirit man, when you feed the Spirit man, you are feeding also the Holy Spirit in you. For instance, when you wake up in the morning and you begin your devotions by maybe singing worship songs, listening to worship songs or, or gospel music, you are feeding the spirit man. And you, you will feel the power of the Holy Spirit being activated in you. You are actually activating the Holy Spirit. It's like when you enter into the house, uh, you may choose to switch on the light or to, not to switch on the light. So you can be in your house and you're in the darkness because you have refused to switch on the light. The same way you can be having the Holy Spirit who is the light and who empowers you and don't utilize him. If you don't utilize him, he will remain in you dormant without you know, enabling you to achieve many things. So your potential depends on how you utilize the Holy Spirit in you. And how do you activate the power in you? Begin by worshiping the Lord, by singing worship songs in the morning, uh, you know, listening to gospel music, and sometimes allowing the Spirit of God to flow in your heart and leading you into prayers, praying and reading the Word of God, 
trusting in God alone and lifting up your holy ones towards heaven and submitting to his authority. That is the way you are activating the power in you. Otherwise, you can have the power in you and remain powerless. And we will say a powerless Christian is like a, a person selling soap and he is dirty. He cannot use the soap to wash his body, yet he is selling the same soap. It's like a preacher who is powerless because he has not activated the power of the Holy Spirit in himself so that he can speak of God's mighty deeds. And finally, even as you search to understand the will of God, let us concentrate and think of the Holy Spirit in us and let us not grieve him. In other words, let us avoid that which can make him sand. Anything that can grieve the Holy Spirit during this season, brothers and sisters, let us avoid it. Any sin that can offend the Holy Spirit, let us avoid. Let us utilize the Holy Spirit in our house, in our hidden house now. Because we are, in, we, we are being torn to stay in the house, let us utilize this season and use the Holy Spirit so much so that whatever gift we have, we can discover them even when we are in our houses. This is a high time for you to close your house and pray and read the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit will be manifested in your life. And I can assure you, some of you will discover your gifts through the Holy Spirit during this season. By the time we are coming back to the church, the physical church, I want to assure you, you have discovered you are a great worshiper. You have discovered you are a great intercessor. You have discovered you are such a wonderful preacher. You have discovered that you have a gift of doing many things in the kingdom of God. This is a high time for you to discover your gifts through the Holy Spirit in your life. Utilize him. Let him lead you. Let him be your greatest comforter. Let him be your counselor. Let him be your teacher. Let him be your encourager. Let him walk with you in the midst of COVID-19. And may the name of the Lord be lifted in your life. And may, your Holy, may the Holy Spirit who live in you also be continued to be lifted in your spiritual life. Thank you so much for watching us and thank you for, uh, for being part of this lesson. Next time we'll be continuing with the same, same topic, the Holy Spirit. God bless you so much. And before I end, let me pray for you. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I thank you for my dear listener. Bless them, Lord, as they continue to think of the Holy Spirit who lives in them. And may you continue, Father, to empower them through your Holy Spirit and to remind them that they have him in them and the Holy Spirit will always continue to work with them in the midst of this uh, COVID-19. And he will be their encourager, he will be their comforter, he will be their intercessor in this season. Lord, I bless you for reminding us that indeed we need the Holy Spirit in our lives, that we need to activate the power that is in us, that we need to realize that our potential will be realized if only we activate the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We want to thank you for feeding us with your word today. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. We may share the words of grace together with your family. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you so much. See you again on Wednesday as we continue with our topic, the Holy Spirit. God bless you.